Greg Hedrick, I don't have slides because, well, why? Uh, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm on the uh, uh, the board for SecIC. I'm also uh, the lead organizer for B-Sides Iowa, uh, which you guys see mentioned uh, Mr. Rice over here, Mr. Murphy over here, uh, our big helpers uh, in getting that whole thing wrangled. So um, keep that in mind. We also, I did, Matt failed. Uh, we've got stickers up the front, so feel free to take some stickers because why not? Uh, Matt, Matt is, is alone, uh, the one who made the design, so. His one shining achievement. His one shining achievement was the design. <laughs> Matt also forgot to mention the bathrooms, like it really mattered. No, it's yeah. like right over here. <laughs> so I was going to give a talk on uh, getting started with Recon NG. Um, so uh, if, for those who don't know, Recon NG is a, is a uh, framework for doing uh, reconnaissance um, as part of a you know pen test, or if you're a blue teamer and you want to do reconnaissance against your own own environment, um, a lot of testers will use tools like Maltigo. It's you know pretty big and clunky, and it's it's fine and it does a lot of cool things. Uh, I just kind of like uh, Recon NG for its simplicity. Uh, it's managed uh, by Tim Tomes, uh, kind of a single guy. That's one of its maybe pitfalls. Uh, sometimes things break, APIs break, and it takes a little while to get them updated. Uh, in fact, when I was Prepping for the sock, my, my Bing API key had expired, and they have a new API. And I tried to put the new API key in, and it didn't work, so I had to go uh, figure out how to fix it. Well, there's actually a pull request uh, in his uh, Bitbucket page that hadn't been merged yet, so I had to pull that down. So if something may break because I'm kind of running on a, a non tested version, but well, I've run into a few little things like that. But uh, all, all in all, it's a pretty good tool. I like using it, so we'll just kind of get you started on it. Uh, first, I have this nice blank. So these are the APIs that support. Uh, I'll probably screw up and do like list eight, list keys and you'll see all my private keys. So I, I didn't want to have to like, yeah, I didn't want to have to like go and cancel them all after tonight. So I, I just printed this out. But uh, so they got Bing, uh, which is actually probably the one I use absolutely the most. Uh, Google changed their API years ago and it's, it's really pretty limiting. Uh, there's Facebook Flickr, has some cool features to it. Um, Jigsaw, if you have a Jigsaw account, so that's like um, like uh, marketers use that site a lot to gather contact information. When I get it's a pay for API. Uh, Pwn list uh, used to be really really good, but I think it kind of sucks now. But it's also super expensive, so it actually has uh, creds and whatnot they save on it. But I, I want to say somebody said it was like twenty five grand a year uh, to get access to their API. So can you zoom um, on that? Do you need me to zoom more? Zoom more. Oh, oh, I was zooming on the right one. Ants. 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 No, no zooming. Yeah, no worries. Control plus. I tried that. Edit. Oh, God. Well, just, imagine. Imagine. just imagine what happened <laughs> when you use leaf pad, I guess, right? Um, so po anyway, poem list, but I've heard there's some changes. Showdown's got an API, Twitter API uh, that you can get some, some good stuff out of. Uh, so we'll just kind of dive in. Can everybody see that OK? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like I said, it's a framework, uh, kind of like uh, Metasploit-ish, right? So there's workspaces. So this this is just the default workspace. If you want to create a workspace, oh, see, I didn't record mine. Just do it live. Oh, <laughs> do it. That went great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can list keys. I'm not going to try and remember not to show my keys because that'll list all my keys. So you can add one like test. Right. Whoops. Workspaces. One of the, one of the uh, pitfalls with it is, is that some of their um, commands are at, uh, different. So sometimes you do like add this or show this. Uh, sometimes it's not. So workspaces add tab completion does work. Um, so this just shows me that there's a bunch of keys that I don't have loaded, which is fine. Uh, so now I'm in the test workspace. You can see that denoted at the right here. So it shows me, and all that is is a separate separate database repo. You know, so if you're doing a test for a client, uh, you can just you know create a specific workspace for the client, and then you can store all your your data in there, and it doesn't mingle with all the other stuff. So uh, <clears throat> show these are all kind of the common things in here. Uh, so companies, right? This would be where you would name a company. Context. This would be. Uh, places that you would gather uh, context that you may be searching for on a particular company. Uh, obviously, credentials, if you find them, like the pwned uh, list API, uh, you, it would store them in there. 
uh, dashboard just shows you some statistics about what oh, there's no activity because I haven't had any yet. That dashboard shows you statistics, domains, that's where you can add domains. So we'll kind of uh, we'll go through and I'll just add a few things so that we can get started. So we do add companies. Oh, let's put companies add. Nope. This is what I'm telling you, it sucks. So we'll do the company I work for. So you can just add a description. Is there some type of hierarchy that you need a company to build? Yeah, so you'll see that when I talk about the modules. Um, so we can do that, show that real quick to see it, so you have some, some uh, context. So if you do show modules, these are all the modules that they have for them. So uh, everything in here is listed. Um, so the type of module it is, so discovery, exploitation, import, recon, and reporting modules. Um, I, I don't really do much with the uh, discovery or exploitation. Most everything I do is in recon. <clears throat> the key thing here is that every re every module has this defining characteristic right here. So everything on the left side where it says companies, that's the data that you have. And everything on the right side is the data that you want. So I have companies and I want contacts out of it. And on the far right, uh, this one's Bing LinkedIn cache. So this uses the Bing uh, API to grab LinkedIn cache data. So if I have the company name and I want contacts for that company, uh, and I can use the Bing, I can do that. So now that I have a company, I can actually do that. So use, use Recon, uh, Companies, uh, Contact, Bing. So uh, I use the Bing API a lot for this. Um, I've heard uh, researchers using the LinkedIn API are getting uh, like cease and desists uh, yeah. from LinkedIn for scraping their stuff. So everybody says, yeah, just use the Bing one, because why not? So I have a Bing uh, key. You can do show options. Uh, there's really, you rarely have to change anything. There's like limiters you can put in place uh, so you don't get like the CAPTCHA. Um, if you want to search specific LinkedIn subdomains, I guess you can put that in there. So you just type run. Oh crap, and it broke. Rather short name. And it broke again. This totally worked earlier. Now I've got the, the link to company delete. Everything's just stored in a database, so you can do delete. <laughs> one. So other things you might want to add in here. Uh, so if you know their domains, right? So I can do add domains, lrs.com. So if you know they have more, you can do that. <clears throat> so if you want to search for just things that you have data for, so if you want to search, So if you want to search, so I say I have domains, you can, uh, domains, you can search domain hyphen, whoop, whoop, domains hyphen, and I'll give you everything that starts with domains hyphen, right? So this is anything that I, I have the domains, these are all the things I can get when I have the domain. So let's see if I got that. Thank you. 
bummer. I wonder if the Wi-Fi here doesn't like multiple Macs from the same. Try that. There. So, uh, well, actually, let's we'll run this one. So this is the um, companies. So it'll go out and hit API, uh, the Bing API, and search for you know site LinkedIn.com, right? Using advanced operators, and then in quotes, LRS, LCAPS. There we go. Now it'll start pulling down any contacts that it finds uh, from that search string. <coughs> right? Using just basic advanced operators like you use in Google. Bing has some uh, similar ones. There used to be a Yandex uh, module for this, but uh, it seems to be gone. We'll just kill that because it'll take forever. So there, that way, found 790 profiles, 791 uh, one contacts. So profiles would be like web profiles, contacts would literally be just like a contact. So then it breaks it down into this cool little table, which because, because screen res, it's all messed up. On the far right side, you can't see it because the screen's screen. Mm -hmm. There we go. On the far right side, it tells you how it gathered that information. So it'll say Bing, LinkedIn, Cache, that's how it gathered that particular uh, context information, right? So that's domains, right? Go ahead. Domains dash, right? So say I have domain names and I want to do some brute force lookup for hosts. So you can use recon, domains, hosts. So I have domains, I want hosts. There's a brute brute host script, which actually just says like a word list for common host names. Uh, and it will do a brute force against those. A brute force domain lookup, NS lookup. Um, which uh, another good point, there's the word list file, so you can put your own word list in there. Uh, if I show global, whoops. Does it hit against the, the authoritative name servers? So that's what I was gonna show you. So you can actually define your name server. All right, so the, the default is the, the Google uh, 8.8.8.8. So you can use Tom's name servers, because I'm sure they're wicked fast. <laughs> <laughs> totally open recursive result. Right, yeah. <laughs> So then you could do uh, brute force lookups uh, against name servers for that information. And that'll run for a little bit. This doesn't take too terribly long. It's it's really common names. So it'll look for things like auto discover, right, which is exchange servers, and www, if you can't find that. So then you do show hosts, right? So now it's broken down all the hosts, grab their IP addresses if, if it can get it back. Um, can tell if there's a wild card? Uh, I don't think it'll pick up a wild card. Or if you feed it a wild card? No, no. If, if like, everything, like, I send, send XYZ PDQ, something that shouldn't exist, and it comes back with an address, like, filter that out? Uh, no, it will actually pick those up. Oh, okay. I've seen it pick those up before, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, we'll grab what, it, what a brute force, right? That's just, a, just another script. Let's see. There was other things I was going to show. Um... Internet companies contacts. Uh, oh, um, oh, so host, you can do, um, so we have hosts. These are all resolved, so you don't need it. There is a host uh, search hosts. So now that you have hosts, what can you do? Right, so there's a hosts resolve. So you can, if you just have the host names, you can look up um, their IP addresses. A lot of times you can get host names by doing a Bing search again for anything that ends in like LRS.com, that sort of thing. Uh, cache what's that? Cache is there a cache huh. uh, you can do Shodan, right? So if you have hosts, you can get ports. So use recon hosts ports. Shodan. Same thing. You need Shodan API key, which for you university folks is free. So you can run that and it'll pull ports out for each host that you have listed in your host table. Oh, look at that. They've got a 1918 address in there open to you now. 
So it'll grab a list of ports, right, based off per per IP address that it identified, right, in, in Shodan. Now, let's see, host resolve, did that, did that. Okay, another cool thing is locations. Um, so it has the concept of location. So you can, uh, locations, add, add locations, right? So you can add latitude, longitude, or you can just type in the address. So, uh, anybody, what's the address for this place? Uh, 136 south of Duke, is that right? So you put in the address there, show locations, and then you can do um, use recon locations. So you have locations, you want to get uh, the geo coordinates for it because that's what everything else uses. If you want to use any of the pushpin modules, pushpin is another tool that. Um, the Tim Tomes wrote that does geolocation lookup up of images, um, and then it puts it on this like pretty graphical interface map thingy, so you can look at it and zoom in on all that fun stuff. So you can do locations, locations. You have locations. You want locations, right? You have the address. You want the geo uh, location. Run. So there, it looked up. Looked up the Latin long for that, right? And then I can use like I, I think I have the Flickr API loaded in here. Location push pins, right? Which are the like the, the visual thing is right. You look at the map like a Google Earth map, and it's got the push pin in it where something was taken. That's what the push pin stands for. So you can use Flickr. Uh, nothing really uh, too easy. You can set the radius in kilometers. So the radius here is a single kilometer. There's I'm going to warn you. I did this earlier. There's going to be a massive uh, number of pictures because we're like right here. So I'll kill it before it stops. So anyway, it'll take that Latin long and it'll go out to Flickr and it'll find images with that same Latin long and then it'll store them. Is that all through Exodus data? Yeah. Yep, all through the metadata of the images. So I think I let it run earlier thinking it was going to stop and there were like 9,500 images and it was still going. So. <laughs> so. so then is it like list keys? <laughs> yeah, right. If you type show keys, what will that do? <laughs> right? Yeah. Show keys. It's show keys, but I will try not to type it. Uh, oh, Why doesn't it show me anything? Yeah, there you go. So then it stores all the all the push pins, and you can actually it gives you the URL link, so you can actually. Uh, I know this is supposed to be PG-13, and I'm totally <laughs> clicking on an image link, <laughs> like uh, oh, blind, but nice you know, YOLO. <laughs> Oh, and it's going to fail. Oh, there we go. Oh, look, it's even like a family albums, I guess. Anyway, so. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, right here. Taking it to the playground right over here. Yeah, so anyway, you can grab all that image, and you can actually pull those out in a CSV format. So if you were, you know, if you were doing physical rec recon against a, site, a target, you can put in there, let long their address, and get all the images around, that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to show you? I kind of showed you, oh, I can show you the dashboard now. So there's the dashboard. It just kind of gives you statistics about uh, what what modules you've run and then what data you've gathered based off that, that information. Um, other things, so we've talked about location. NetBlocks is literally just that. You can put in like a, you know, slash A or a slash 32, uh, which is a <coughs> block. So put a slash 32 and then you can work off that IP space. Um, again, if you find credentials, I'm not real sure what leaks are. I think that's fairly new. Uh, that might be leak data. There used to be a, I think there used to be a paste bin module. I'm not sure what repositories are. Oh, repositories are uh, specific. I think if you're looking at GitHub data. So will this only go against OSN kind of stuff, or can you have it actually go hit against those NetBlock IPs directly? No. It, well, it'll do whatever you have a module for, and I don't. So I mean, if, I don't know of any modules that go direct. There are some exploitation modules in there. Mm -hmm. Um, that would probably, would I would assume would do that, right? There's these two. Uh, I've never I've never used them, so not real sure. Um, there is. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if any of these would hit directly unless you set you know your DNS resolver to their their DNS servers. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know of any. No, not that I know of. Uh, there's uh, there's searches against the Google Hacking database if you want to do that. Uh, there are these search for vulnerabilities, right? So it'll search Punk Spider, uh, the Google Hacking database, and X Exposed to see if there's any vulnerabilities based off of the domains that you find. So, I mean, if you're bored and you want to put in like uiwa.edu, I'm sure a bunch will show up in there. <laughs> uh, last thing I want to show reporting. So there are re <laughs> reporting. I use that lightly, right? So. Uh, use reporting so there's there's these handful at the bottom uh, I think pushpin actually puts it out into an image that you can load up like an HTML image with the, the map of the location you're looking at and it puts the pins all in the place right XLS file XML right but everybody you know at the end of the day everything goes into CSVs right <laughs> saying select uh, this is where the file goes you can select which table you want to dump so you're going to post table if you want to dump your domains table, if you find uh, domains, contacts, all that sort of stuff. And then you just run it and it, it writes that file. So I think that was about it that I was uh, wanted to show. But uh, I mean, when I first got started with it, as soon as somebody explained to me the, the, the meaning of the this dash this, that was what kind of like made it all click, right? So this is what you have, this is what you want. So pretty simple. Anyway, questions, comments? Complaints. Yeah. So just to figure out the workstations you were doing at the very beginning, that you decided to have a workstation for each thing you were loading into, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So if you, yeah, that's really just kind of they're literally just physical workspaces, like in Metasploit framework, okay. right? So you can separate whatever you're doing across different ones, and they're completely separate repositories and database. I think it's SQL on the back end. Are your are your keys shared across workspaces? Yes, there are global keys, and, and so, they are. So, like, so if I went into workspaces and did show keys, <laughs> they would show up no matter what workspace I'm working on. Are there only global keys? Uh, I think so. Um, oh, we, we can ask it. Well. No, I mean, so here's the. So if you're, if you're yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think there are. I don't think there is a concept of keys specific to a workspace. I think they're all global. Um, so I was just going to show this. This is there's a, a wiki out there on the Bitbucket page for for Recon NG. Uh, it kind of sucks. It gets. It, I mean, this is the kind of thing that I see a lot of. Right? He was doing all these updates until 2015. He said, "Yeah, I stopped maintaining this when it got out of hand. Just Google it." So <laughs> some of the documentation's a, a little uh, a little light. Um, there's there is information in here on uh, on how to do uh, oh, the usage guide. The usage guide needs a little help, right? Hopefully. Don't be mad to the script of the video, and you guys can go back to this for usage guide or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, there's a there's a whole bunch of documentation out here how to uh, acquire your API keys. Some of it's a little bit out of date. Some of it's like TBD. Huh. Um, oh, that was one I didn't show. Census uh, Census is the the like scan the whole internet joint thing between University of Illinois um, and University of Michigan, I think. Yeah, and so it's got API keys for that in there. Those are like free, and those are wicked good for uh, for looking at posts, uh, especially if you don't have Shodan. Um, so is everything to the left that blocks the blocks. system? So it would be like power down. It, it didn't seem like we had mesh in the cables. So it, does it stay when you power down? It's persistent. Oh yeah, it's a SQLite database on the back end, so it all stays there. So you, when you leave, you can leave a workspace, go to a new workspace. Uh, and it'll all be there, so you can work back and forth between two. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there's some light documentation on how to get API keys. Pretty much just whatever site you want to go to, if it's Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, you just go to the dev site and ask for API keys, and they give it to you for the most part. I think the Bing, the Bing one, they have like, uh, it's like limited to a thousand queries a day or something like that, but it's free. Uh, most of them you can get are pretty free, except for. <laughs> Separate phone list, which is wicked expensive. Open up your checkbook. Anybody else? Anybody? Mueller? All right, I'm done. <laughs>